I am here this morning with Troy Meyerson, and this is an important talk because it's about email marketing and it's about what's happening in the laws of email marketing and how can we simplify them for you so that you don't get yourself in trouble. So. Troy is um, growing a mustache for charity. Troy, let's just get this out of the way right now. What's going on? Why are you growing a mustache? Well, I'm growing a mustache for Mustaches for Kids, which is raising money for the Special Olympics. I love that. Do you do that every year? I do it every May. And my wife and three daughters hate it every year. <laughs> I love it. I love it. I think that's so sweet. Well, good for you for being a charity driven man and making a difference for the kids. So that's really awesome. So we want to get into this um, or at least try and simplify this new law. So can you share a little bit about who you are? We'll say hi to people. Hi, uh, Wendy McKenna. Hi, Lexi. Hi, Deidre. Hi, Kim, Devora, Natalie, Dagma, Dagmar. Gosh, you guys are just up early and rolling. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. All right, so um, as these numbers are jumping, these people, a lot of the people who uh, coach with us and work with us actually do email marketing. And then anybody who does any sort of online marketing has a component of email marketing in their business if they wanna be successful. So can you tell us a little bit about this new law that's coming out and then we can get into logistics about how people are capturing data, their contact information and what they need to do to make sure that they keep themselves in compliance. Sure. So the the new law is called the GDPR. Uh, it's the General Data Protection Regulation. Uh, it relates to data protection for individuals that live in Europe. And uh, it comes into effect May 25th. So it's Friday. It's coming soon. It is coming soon. And for a lot of people, sometimes they don't even know they have people who are from Europe, like Germany or the UK or places like that on their database. And so it's important for people to start looking now, if you haven't yet, about who's on your list. So talk a little bit about, we'll get, we'll get into how it affects, like how we're, how we're, you know, using their data, but there's also some pretty hefty fines to it. So let's start with the fines and then let's back into, um, it's important to know, right? And then back sure, into- sure how how we need to keep ourselves safe well the fines can be significant um it's two percent of turnover which is gross revenue uh and then if it's considered to be willful it can be as much as four percent of gross revenue wow so in an, over a year so that that's a can be pretty significant yeah absolutely okay so explain it explain a little bit about this this Law. Sure. So the P applies to uh, companies that collect data uh, on uh, people in the EU. And if you target individuals in the EU, then it applies to you. And what it essentially is saying is that you need to be lawful in your collection of data. Uh, you need to be transparent in your collection. Uh, so you need to let people know when you're collecting data about them, what you're going to be using it for. Uh, you need to safeguard the data. And then you also need to give individuals the ability to review what you have on them, allow them to, data that is, uh, allow them to modify that to the extent that they want to. Uh, and it even requires the right to be forgotten, as it calls it, which is the right to require that you get rid of their data. Mm. So, for instance, um, somebody asked, does this apply to the Middle East at all? Does it? No. Okay, great. Although, it also I'm sorry, Shanda. One thing I would say is it doesn't right now, but it definitely is a current. And there's a lot of talk that it will it will at some point in the not so distant future be the norm even in the United States because if I have a lot of data on Europeans and people in the US and I handle them completely differently, then you know at some point the standard will likely be closer to the GDPR than not. 
Yeah. So, for instance, now you and I were talking last week. Gosh, it was last week. You and I were talking last I week. Know. I'm like, it's all mushing together. And I was saying, so if I send out an email and it hits someone in Germany or the or in the in the in the UK or somewhere in Europe, and I ha you were saying I should add something to my newsletter where I need to have a process in place so that if somebody clicks it, they can find out more like what data do I have on them? Do I have like what courses have they purchased from me? Where did they come into the into my database? And then first answer that. I've got so many questions for you. <laughs> sure. So what you're referring to is a data assessment. And part of the GDR is to know what data you have on individuals. So data is not just, you know, name and email and maybe a, a mailing address, but it can be uh, geo information, it can be IP addresses, it's information that you could identify an individual by. Right, so like for instance, um, say somebody sends me an inquiry and says, what data do you have on me? Is that good enough? I can just go back in my database and send them an email and tell them? Well, it, yes, if you just give them the opportunity to review the whole universe of data that you have on them. So whatever that is, you need to have a procedure in place to be able to, within 30 days, so that's the requirement, it's one month. If I ask, what information do you have on me, Troy Meyerson, then you have to put that together and an email would be fine, uh, but it has to be all the information. And then once you get to me, I can tell you, I want you to uh, change my mailing address. You have the wrong mailing address. I can tell you to get, get rid of that email um, that you have on me. I can tell you, I want you to delete all of it. Um, or uh, I can tell you, I want you to only use it for this purpose, but not any other purpose. So why isn't unsubscribe good enough now? Great question. Uh, unsubscribe is not uh, enough um, under the GDPR. It's unsubscribe follows can spam and that's the United States email law. But, uh, but for GDPR, you have to have this whole data ascent and then the ability for the individual, they call it the data subject, uh, to be able to send a request and look at all of the information that you have on them. And, and really, the, the general principle that the GDPR is based on is the concept that the data subject, the individual, owns the information on them and that you are really just licensing it based on a consent that you've been granted, and at any time they can withdraw that consent. So I've been reading about this, and there's it's there's areas like, I mean, my team's been working on it for, I didn't even know my team was working on it, but my team was working on it for the last, you know, three weeks. But I'm also seeing a lot of, you know, a lot of my peers sending out emails saying you won't be on my list anymore, even to the United States contacts. You won't, I won't be, you won't be on my email list anymore unless you click here to, you know, opt in for my newsletter. And so that comes down to this question that gets a little confusing. What if somebody comes in through a registration page for an ebook or for, you know, a webinar and say, you know, there's something called product launches um, where you get, you know, if you're lucky, 20 people to mail their databases and their databases come back and opt in for your webinar or your video that leads to a webinar and then sells them. Right. And so there's all these, you know, there, it's going to be interesting to see how this plays out because, you know, product launches like now you're going to have to be extra careful because on your product launches, our databases have I mean, they're mixed. Right. They're, I mean, you could you could segment for sure, at least, at least if you're using a good database company like Infusionsoft or Entrepore or something like that, you can segment, which is what we've done. We've segmented. But um, 
you know, there's this whole conversation now, like when they come through a video that takes them to a webinar to then make them an offer, is there anything we should be aware of in that process now? Can you hear me, Troy? So that you, oh, there. What's that? that that's all right. Yeah. Go for it. Sorry. It needs to be specific for the business purpose that you intend to use it for. So if you my information because I'm buying your product, right? You have some videos that I have and that's your, that's your business purpose. I've given you my information, whether you, you charge for it or not, let's say give you a uh, We've now uh, transacted. What's we're that? Cutting, we're cutting out a little bit. Hold on one sec. Okay, try again. Okay. So if I'm coming to you through, say, am I still cutting out? No, you're good. No. Okay. So if I'm you to buy your ebook, let's say, uh, and I, whether I pay for it or I don't pay for it, I've given you my email address because I want to get your, your ebook. That transaction is fine. But if you now plan to try to sell a complimentary, let's say I, you have a, a workout ebook and now you want to sell me some workout equipment, you have to have asked me for consent to sell me those the consent. Uh, you're cutting out a little bit. So here's what I heard you say. I heard you say if I have a workout email book or ebook and whether they buy it or they get it for free and now I want to sell them and this sells, let's say nutrition. And now I want to sell them um, not nutrition. Maybe I want to sell them a workout DVD or um, a coaching program. Right. You're saying that I have to ask I have to ask these guys for consent because they came in on nutrition. Right now, you can ask them at the time that they came in. And you can ask them for consent to sell them other complimentary products or services. You can say, you know, you my ebook on your here. You're buying my ebook on uh, working out. Please, you know, you can ask for consent for sale of complimentary products and services. That's okay. But just because I gave it to you for your ebook, if you don't get consent for that, you can't use it for other business purposes. Yeah, that's challenging because now I wonder what's going to happen to the product launches where people market other people's products. It's like all of a sudden that model is in trouble. You know what I mean? Because now me supporting somebody else's business and mailing for somebody else's business. If it's not, if I haven't gotten consent for other people's, you know, for being able to offer other products and services, I'm now in breach of this law, especially if I'm selling to Europe at all, which is obviously on most people's databases that are doing email marketing. So, okay. So now, you know, we got to face the fact that, in Canada and in the US and these other areas, this law is coming forward. I mean, it's it's originally intended to what? Is this originally intended for the big guys because they're just getting so much information on us and just selling us constantly? Like, why did they even create this in your opinion? Well, I think that it's a shift in how Europe is being data and, and that's, sort of what I was describing when I said they believe that the data really belong to the individual. And so they're giving more rights to the individual, the ability to be forgotten or to withdraw consent, uh, you know, just because somebody says you can market complimentary equipment or services, products and services today, you want to make sure that tomorrow, if I change my mind, I'm getting too many emails, I can effectively withdraw that consent. Okay, so should I'm sure the email marketing companies are going to come up with something for their technology, I would imagine. 
but it obviously yeah. falls on my responsibility. Um, so, cause I'm not seeing it in Infusionsoft yet. Uh, but with that being said, it's coming out in a week from now. So my question is, is right now, if people are marketing, marketing to, you know, I would say anywhere really, because you really got to think that this law is coming into play or something like it's coming into play everywhere. So what would you recommend that we do as far as with our existing databases? And then um, I think I understand like now on our registration pages, our opt-in pages for getting our free products that lead them through a funnel. Um, we're going to have to have something where they check a box to agree that, you know, we can share other products and services of like content to them. And if they check that, then they're allowed, they'll go into a segregate, you know, a segmented list. If not, then we can't market to them anything other than that. And your question was, you know, what can we do? And, and I think you're right that you want to ask for broad, I say broader consent, you ask for the ability to market additional products and services from them. But the one thing that, and it's a fine line, the one thing I'll tell you is that I don't think that you can be so broad and non-specific and, and be effective by saying like, and I can send you in emails for any reason, which, and I'm not saying you were suggesting that, but I know some people out there think that if they just put in privacy policy, some really, really broad statement, like you agree that I can send you emails for anything, it's okay. Ah, it sucks for getting such a bad connection. He said, I think. Troy. Okay, I'm gonna, yeah. There. Let me see if I can move over here and get a better. Is that any better? I think so. So, okay. Privacy, moved privacy, around. Policy, privacy policy. So you're saying don't think you can just throw a privacy policy up and get them to click a button and you're going to be safe. Right. And, and, and don't, uh, it does need to be specific to the business purpose. So, um, I think saying, can I sell you complimentary products and services after I've, you know, we were talking about a book on working out, right? Yeah. I think that if you say, can I, you know, can I use this information to provide you offers on complimentary products and services related to the ebook that you just bought? I think that that's okay. Uh, I think that that gives some specificity to the use of that. But I think if you say, can I use your email to send you offers for anything and everything that I might, you know, have an affiliate link for? I think that, that that's going too far. So I think you 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 can broaden it, but you have to be careful not to try to broaden it so broad. So this is probably a question you might not want to answer on video, but I'm gonna say it anyway. Um, <laughs> uh, you know. I'm just wondering how they're going to even manage this. You know what I mean? Like, I'm just wondering how, like, how they're even going to manage all of these, these, like, all of a sudden this whole law is shifting over. How are they going to manpower and manage this? I mean, I just, I, I can't imagine it's going to be overly strict at this exact moment. Like, I'm going to imagine that it's going to take some time for them to be able to, be able to completely enforce this law and get it into play because so many people are going to be behind the eight ball. I mean, there's people right now that don't even know this law is coming into effect because they're doing business, but they're not business people. Do you get what I'm saying? Like they're not fall, they're not staying up on this stuff. Right. Absolutely. I, I mean, I think your point is well taken. Um, I do think that, so this law has been on the books for a long time. It just is, is getting implemented May 25th, but I think it was released like two years ago. Mm -hmm. um, it's just now getting on people's radars because it's imminent for implementation, right? Yeah. But I think you're right that the enforcement, um, I mean, it, it's gonna take time to roll it out. 
and uh, and they'll probably, you know, m more than likely, the first people who will sort of be on the hit list will be larger companies, um, unless they want to send a message that even smaller companies, you know, so it, it, who knows, right? We're we're sort of guessing how the government will act, and sometimes that's a, a dangerous uh, guessing game. It is. Somebody just asked, um, would they have to submit an SAR? I don't even know what that is. What's an SAR? Do you know? Would they, well, I, I, I think that uh, what they're talking about is the request for information. And I, if I'm not mistaken, I think the SAR is the, is the old reference, uh, not under the, the GDPR. But the, the, if I'm understanding the question correctly, a request by a data subject for information uh, has to be responded to, used to be, I think, 45 days, now 30 days. Uh, so within one month, you have to let the individual know what information you have on them, the whole sort of uh, um, universe of information that you have. Right. Okay. So... So are you suggesting at this point now people start sending out like a, a new subscribe or a new kind of moving people into um, a qualification or, or an, a consent with their existing databases now to get them to consent um, so that they can, you know, get everybody up to par on this? So I think that's, that's a good step. Um, I really think first step is a data assessment uh, of, of themselves to sort of understand what information they have on individuals. Uh, and that's not just like CRM information necessarily. I mean, do they, do they collect IP addresses? Do they have geolocation information that they keep? What, what well, information do you- What if you have Google Analytics? I mean, we have Google Analytics on everything, right? So Google, if it's uh, anonymized, then you're okay, unless you can take sort of generally anonymized information and still be able to reduce it down to an, a specific individual. Okay. But if your analytics are, you know, I have 500 people who bought products from California, then that's, that's not the type of information that they're talking about. Okay, so what about with us? We have a good base of clients um, in the EU, right, and in Europe. And so the people who have purchased from us in Europe, are we all right to still be e emailing them? Well, you should firm what kind of consent you have from those individuals. And to your point, um, you've said that you've had people emailing you saying, we're going to drop you off our list unless you, you know, give us this consent. That's a great policy procedure for you to take those individuals that you're talking about that you have in the EU. Um, get sort of reconfirm that the consent that you have is specific to the business purpose that you plan to use it for. Okay. And the one thing that I'll throw out there uh, that the, we haven't mentioned that DPR does require. And if you have a material base of individuals that you email in the EU, then you also under the GDPR are required to have a representative within Europe, the EU, that uh, is an individual that that they can contact with regard to the data that you have on them. It's sort of like a registered agent for purposes of the GDPR. How do you find someone like that? So there, as you would imagine, now that there's a cottage out. industry <laughs> for the GDPR, uh, there are lots of companies now who are providing that service. Awesome, so Google them. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. Google them. Go find them. Okay, so um, 
All right. So if anybody wants to get a hold of you, Troy, how do they get a hold of you? Because people might have additional questions like I did. I got to sit with you for some time and I obviously know how to contact you. So is there any way that people can get a hold of you? Sure. Uh, my email is sure. my email is T Erson, which is E M E Y E R S O N say that at again. say that again. T sure. T M E Y E R S O N at and it's F as in Frank S as in Sam. L as in Larry, F as in Frank.com. I'll just put it up for people to see. Okay, so there we go. Is that right? That's right. Perfect. Awesome. So I appreciate you spending some time with us and helping us get clear. I'm sure people still have additional questions about what to do and like how to language things and, and best move people over. I definitely suggest, I mean, uh, we'll be doing it with our entire database as far as in the U.S. as well. First, we focused on our European side of our database, but then we are going to move forward on our Canada and our U.S. and all of that. So we're ahead of the game so that we're not going to get getting ourselves in any trouble. So um, I'm sure there's questions with if you're working with someone and now are you allowed to still email them like content that you're working with them What when people like you know, what do you put on your newsletters now so that if you miss a step or something happens that people can actually reach out to you and get all that information? And then who on your team is set up to be able to make sure that that information is easily grabbed and there's a process, as Troy said, there has to be a process to this, not just randomly answering people. So what's the process inside your company when this happens? Um, I know that Troy was saying that to me, which we didn't talk about here, but um, if you are in process of handling this, that is also showing that you're in good status as a business owner moving in the right direction. So I hope that this was helpful. If you want to email Troy, go ahead and do that. I would recommend that you do that so that if you need any support, he is a wealth of information and a really good guy. I mean, you sat with me all throughout like a lunch just talking about all the details i'm like so what 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 do you mean you know so um it really does help to be in the know um and not just read information online and think that you understand all the details of it to be able to ask someone like troy really supports and helps so i hope the 6 a.m coffee with shanda made a difference for you i hope that it keeps you safer i hope that it helps you continue to do good business in all do honesty, I think that this um, new law will be a great thing because I think your open rates are going to go up. I think that your um, conversion rates are going to go up because you're going to have people who truly do want information from you and are better qualified to actually work with you. And our inboxes are going to start getting a little less crazy. All right, Troy, any last words you want to share before we end? Thanks, Shanda. I appreciate the time. Yeah, it was great to have you. I really appreciate you. All right, we'll see you tomorrow morning.